Party leadership contests often kick up a lot of dust, test the campaign chops of candidates, and offer an opportunity for lots of attention and signing up new members. None of that happened in this year's race for the leadership of the Ontario New Democrats, a job which incidentally also means becoming leader of His Majesty's loyal opposition at Queen's Park. Only one person stepped forward, and so, uncontested, Marat Stiles effectively won the job before a vote was even held. She is the member of provincial parliament for Davenport in downtown Toronto, and she joins us now. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much. Is this the way you figured it would unfold? No. <laughs> no, it isn't. I, I for sure thought we'd be in the race till March, which is when the vote was supposed to take place. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a surprise, but I, I'm willing to roll with this. Yep. <laughs> right on. We'll come back uh, to this more later. I want to start with uh, a very heavy-hitting question, if we can, right off the top. Mm -hmm. You're from Newfoundland. Yes. Where's your accent? Ah, well, I've been gone for 30 years. But still. I am told, well, and, I, and I'm told that my accent comes back after a few beer and when I'm back in Newfoundland by my daughters, who swear it does. But I don't think I ever had a really strong accent. I grew up in St. John's and, I mean, outside of St. John's, but I essentially went to school in St. John's, so I don't think I ever had a super strong accent. But when I do listen to recordings, yeah, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> does, does being from that part of the country, in other words, you weren't born and raised in downtown Toronto, no. does that make you a different kind of leader of the New Democrats of Ontario? I, I think it does. I definitely, I mean, I am an Ontarian, right? Mm -hmm. I, I've lived here for 30 years. I'm proud of it. But I, I do think it helps me to understand other places and that Ontario isn't just about, you know, big cities like Toronto. Mm -hmm. I think it helps me understand the impact of a province where the resource industry is like at the forefront uh, and what that means and what it's like to see communities that you, you've grown up in die, which we certainly saw. Mm -hmm. I think it does make me a little different. And I mean, I, I do think also that uh, Newfoundlanders, we, we do have a good sense of humor about things. I'm able to laugh a lot of stuff off. Hmm. All right, you're going to forgive a bunch of inevitable questions which you know are coming, but yeah. let, let's start with this. I mean, you're replacing somebody in Andrea Horvath who, you know, is of Southern Ontario, born and raised in Hamilton, lived here yeah. from all I can see much of her life. Uh, I guess people want to know off the top how you intend to lead differently than she did. And she was there for a long time, right? I mean, four election campaigns, 13 years, et cetera. What do you think? Well, uh, first of all, I mean, obviously I'm very grateful, as we all are, I think, to Andrea for her achievements. We are official opposition. We still have a strong caucus um, and a very diverse caucus. Um, and that's due to her hard work, there's no question. Uh, I do think I have a different style of leadership. And uh, one of the things that I think you can expect from me is, uh, is a lot of work at the grassroots, um, connecting in communities. Uh, I think also, and, and what I'm finding is as we tour the province, that a lot of people are coming out that have never supported the NDP before. Uh, I think I connect with those folks. I think they're, they're interested, they're certainly curious, and they're coming away saying that they're, they're excited about something else. So I think I have an opportunity here to, to build and to reach into new areas where, we're, frankly, we're going to have to, because I intend to win the next election. Okay, more on that in a bit, because mm -hmm. that's not something most New Democrat leaders over the years that I've covered Queen's Park actually say or believe. Mm. You really believe it? Absolutely, 100%. Let's try to find out what kind of leader of the NDP you are. And by that I mean, I mean, I go back far enough to remember when Stephen Lewis was leader of the right. NDP and he was a self-acknowledged, you know, pure ideologue who had no pretensions ever of becoming Premier of Ontario. And you go from that part of the continuum all the way to, say, somebody like Gary Dewar, mm -hmm. who I think might have been very happy, the former Premier of Manitoba, might have been very happy being, you know, he would have felt at home in some progressive conservative parties in mm -hmm. Ontario history. Bill Davis's PC party, for sure. Where are you on that line? Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've been a New Democrat for pretty much the whole time I've been in Ontario for sort of about 30 years. Um, I believe very strongly in the, princi the principles of social democracy. I am, uh, I, I've worked very hard on the policies. I bet I've also been an activist in my community. Um, I, I think that what makes me, what inspires me are bold ideas, you know? Uh, and I do believe in that sort of, those NDP principles and values. And I, what I think is exciting right now, actually, and why I think I can say very confidently that I'm, I'm in it to win, mm -hmm. is because I think that those values and principles and ideas connect with a lot of people right now. There's a lot of people who are, who are looking for that kind of vision for this province and hope. 
and they've been told for so long that this is as good as it gets. Uh, I think they feel like they've been taken for granted. I think it's one of the reasons why voter turnout has been so sadly low. And and so I feel very proud of those principles. I mean, I'm I'm excited. Like I love talking to people like Stephen Lewis about the history of our party, and um, but I'm also excited about new people who are coming into the party with new ideas. And and um, but I think they need to be grounded in those strong social democratic principles. Well, one bold idea Stephen Lewis ran on was nationalizing Inco and a bank. I mean, are you <laughs> are, are you for that? You know, I, I do believe in um, a strong role for government, you know, and I and I would love to see uh, us get back into the job of doing more like building of housing, for example. I mean, I think government has a very strong role to play. And I'm proud, too, of the, the times when the NDP stepped in to ensure that we saved major industry, right? Um, but I'm also a realist uh, in terms of what I think uh, is facing us right now. We have some major challenges in this province, and uh, I want to work with everybody to try to build this province up and create more jobs and more opportunities. But I'll tell you, one of my big focuses is for 100% going to be dealing with the health care and education crisis. Would you nationalize auto insurance in the province? <laughs> um, the NDP they, once stood they, for that. They did. And, you know, I, I'm a big, I'm actually a big supporter of um, of some, in fact, we have a bill that we've put forward myself, Tom Rakosevic and myself, um, on auto insurance rates and ending the, uh, the discrimination. I, I do think a public auto insurance plan would have been the right way to go and definitely willing to reconsider it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's deal with this head on. It's not your fault no one decided to run against you. <laughs> But it does deprive your party of all the, as we suggested in the intro, all the sis boom ba that a convention would have brought. How far behind the eight ball do you think that puts you in as much as you didn't get this big festival mm. so that people, well, sign up new members, get a lot of attention, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I've been running like it was that kind of race since September. So I've, we've been bringing that boom ba, <laughs> uh, as you said, for the last few months. I mean, we've been going out across the province. Uh, I've been meeting people. We've held events. Um, and the party has tried to make it a little more exciting. But the truth is, in this moment anyways, in the kind of midst of a pandemic still, one would argue, uh, events are not like that anymore, right? So it is always a challenge right now, I think, for every party to get that kind of, you know, capacity at an event that, that generates a lot of excitement. Um, Debates are important. I had no intention of ever debating myself. I mm. was, <laughs> you know, love to debate others. But but those conversations uh, did happen. There was excitement. There remains excitement. And I think what actually is, is really interesting in this moment is that we are very unified, right? Those kind of contests can be very divisive. Mm -hmm. We are unified uh, and we are very focused on the real race. So that was part of it. But now we are back to where the real focus should be, which is on defeating Doug Ford. No, not to beat a dead horse here, though, but when Pierre Polyev won the National Conservative Party yeah. leadership, you know, he won in a walk, as right. presumably you would have had other candidates been in the race. But there was something about the way he defeated, you know, mm -hmm. Jean Charest, Patrick mm -hmm. Brown, mm -hmm. and on and on, that really proved to the country and to conservatives, I guess he's our guy. Mm -hmm. You didn't get a chance to do that. You disappointed. Well, I can't speak to why others chose not to enter the race. But I do know that a lot of MPPs were looking at it, a lot of my colleagues. We have very strong, a very strong team, as you know, uh, very strong MPPs, many of them leaders themselves, leaders in their communities. And uh, But I can't speak for why they chose not to run. But I do think that it was a nod to the strength of our campaign as well, right, that we did uh, we were out there organizing. We were out there raising the money that we needed to raise and getting the signatures and building the membership and getting into every corner of the province. And I think it did send a really strong message uh, that we were going to be the campaign to beat. And in the end, like I said, I mean, I, I do feel like when people say to me, well, there was no race, I said, where were you? I, I was <laughs> I was in it. We've been, we've been well, at it you, uh, ever since. You yeah. won't say it, but I'll say it. You scared everybody off. I mean, you got into the race early. You had tons of support. You had the financial backing. You scared everybody off. Again, not your fault, but that's the way it turned out. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I definitely, um, again, can't really speak for my colleagues. Yeah. And, and lots of people have lots of reasons why they choose to do this or not. And for me, um, the stars were aligned, you know, mm. I, I in my family life, in my uh, my sense of my vision for what the province, for me, this is the right time. Uh, I got, I'm excited about it. I really believe this is an opportunity. And I also am really motivated um, by 
what I see happening in the province. And well, let I, me pick up on that, because yeah. I think one of the things, okay, this is me, I could be totally wrong, but here we go. I'm accustomed to seeing New Democrats losing seats to liberals in election after election after election after election in this province. I don't ever remember them losing seven or eight seats in one election to Tories. And that's what happened back in June. Do you yet have a good understanding of why the New Democrats lost so many seats to Doug Ford's progressive conservatives? Um, well, that's a big question. I, I think some of those seats, a significant number of those seats were non-incumbents. They were seats where we didn't have an incumbent running. That wasn't, and which is not an insignificant issue for, for anyone. Um, but I do think that the conservatives were very focused on, you know, trying to convince Ontarians, for example, that they represent working people. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, voter remorse out there right now, um, both in terms of the quality of the candidates that were elected. I'll just say that. I, I'm noticing that when I go into those ridings. Um, but also uh, because the government sold them a bill of goods. <laughs> Because, because they've broken all their promises already. Because they did not tell them they were going to trample on the charter rights of, uh, of unionized workers. Because they did not tell them they were going to be paving over farmlands and, and, uh, well, and selling say off that. wetlands. They ran on the 413. They ran on the Bradford Bypass. Not the Green Belt. And I do belt. think that's a huge issue. <clears throat> I mean, I'm hearing that from many corners of the province, not just, I mean, communities close to the Green Belt. And um, there's a real sense that something doesn't smell right in that deal too, let's just say it. So, uh, but I, I think there's a, I think the, also that the, uh, the use of the notwithstanding clause, I mean, there, that united labor in a way that I haven't seen in many, many years. And it united labor with the NDP, and that's not insignificant either. Well, okay, Michael Balagas, who's run campaigns for yes. the NDP both here and in Manitoba and, you know, is a tremendous veteran in the party. Mm -hmm. He has said, and this is his quote, the NDP have become fantastic at having an intellectual debate about class and redistribution of wealth, but it has come at the expense of being able to talk directly to working class vo voters about their lives and needs. And he added, the question is, can we advance a greater social justice agenda? Absolutely. Without us losing working class voters, probably not. And it does raise the question whether the NDP has been so focused on equity issues, on social justice issues, that you've lost the blue collar vote. What do you think? I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I, I think that, um, I, but I would say, and, and you know, Michael was at the helm for many of these years, um, that, that we have perhaps not connected and prioritized um, that relationship with the labor movement that we need, we, we, you know, there is a tendency, I think, has been to take that for granted, that we are the party of labor. But you, you need to be talking to the people who are the, who are in, who are the labor, labor uh, workers, the unionized mm -hmm. workers and, um, and working people. And I intend to prioritize that, absolutely. So the party might have taken its eye off that ball. I, I think that it was, I don't think it's been intentional. We have, I should say, you know, many of our MPPs, our caucus members, um, who work, you know, so hard every day, um, you know, connecting with labor on those issues. Um, Wayne Gates, Jamie West, uh, Guy Bourguin, all, you know, these folks are doing the work, really hard work. Um, so it's there, but I think it needs to come from the top as well. Well, Labor Minister Monty McNaughton of the current government said the NDP was more concerned about statues and street names than they were about good jobs. Now, I get he's a partisan, and I get, you know... And also, what a terrible thing to say, though. Like, th that really is dismissive of all the people who, in this province, particularly Indigenous people, who have important reasons. So this is a good example. Have a, this government says one thing one day and then another thing the other. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot more people that understand when you stop to think about why people raise concerns about things like statues and street names, it may seem like uh, not a big deal, but when you think about why why those 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 names mean so much and and are so hurtful I, I mean i think it's very dismissive of the minister to to put it like that D okay i hear you but at some level he's speaking to something that obviously resonated with enough people that it enabled his party to take seven or eight seats away from you guys in the last election and it does i mean it just it basically but raises it's the same issue. politics isn't it though it's the same thing that paulie ever's playing at it's a politics of division it's a politics of hate that's, that's something that I actually find irresponsible of political leaders. 
I would expect better from a minister. I, I think that you know, it's our responsibility as political leaders to bring people together, to help people understand each other better. Um, I don't think that these things are mutually exclusive. I, I, I know lots of people who are, um, you know, working people who are also Indigenous people. <laughs> you know, it's like this is the other piece of this. And, and, and I think that um, what the Conservatives do, their approach to politics is to divide people. And that's a really good example of it, um, what the Minister said. One of the traps I think New Democrats have fallen into over the years is that because you've only governed once, right, 1990 to 95. In Ontario. Only, in Ontario. Great point. In Ontario. <laughs> Um, you have often been able to be typecast by your political opponents as sort of sanctimonious downtown Toronto white wine sipping lefties out of touch with reality. That's the stereotype. How do you get out of that box? Well, I mean, first of all, I would say look at our caucus, right? We are a caucus of lots of, you know, there's a lot of diversity there of backgrounds and cultures and communities, and we represent. Uh, ridings in every corner of this province. Um, I do think that, uh, you know, we always have work to do, but I mean, I think that um, what we need to do is be out there connecting with more and more people. You know, I, I, for me, it's all about the organizing that we do in the communities and on the ground. And I do think, you know, there are communities that have never considered supporting the NDP because they don't know, they don't know how that relates to them. I think about like, I went to Newmarket for their pride parade last summer. A riding you've never won. Yeah, exactly. And there was a great little NDP contingent. It wasn't quite as big as the conservative mm -hmm. contingent, but it was the, the um, excitement and the connections uh, the, there was something happening there. And I think we just need to not take, we, we need to assume that every, every riding is an opportunity for us, that there are people who are looking for an alternative. And all you have to do is see what Ford and the Conservative government are doing in communities across this province to see how people are losing hope. And we need to remind them and inspire them to believe that things can be different and, and give them some solutions. He is letting a lot of people down. And communities like Newmarket, that's one of them. There's a lot of people there right now, a lot of conservatives disappointed in this government. Do you think the provincial liberals are a spent force? You know, I, I think they have some significant, um, uh, they have a lot to do, a lot of work to do to, uh, and, and, but to be honest, for me in our, in our party right now, that's not my, that's not what I'm looking at. I'm focused on... No, no, but the voters on, are. Because the vote, yeah. if the voters want an alternative to these guys, they're looking at you, they're going to look at whoever ends up leading yeah. that party, and you've never, your party has never in Ontario history come second twice in a row. And you have now. So, is this, uh, is this a new permanent state of Ontario political affairs? It may very well be. Um, again, I can't speak for the Liberals, but I do think that uh, what I'm finding increasingly is that people are coming to us looking for that progressive alternative that they're not seeing in the Liberal Party. And, uh, and I think they're seeing the strength as well of our, of our movement, of our caucus. Uh, and I, I think we, could, we can bring them in. I mean, I do think we are, we, we are an umbrella and we need to bring people in from lots of different backgrounds and, and political leanings. And there are a lot of red Tories, you know, we used to always talk about red Tories. Uh, a lot of progressive conservatives who are very unhappy with this government. There are a lot of liberals who are very unhappy with their own party. Um, I, they may come to us, but my focus right now is, is in, you know, pushing the government back in their, their, the worst parts of their agenda. Uh, and we've had some success there in the last few months, for sure. Um, and building uh, those connections with movements that are organizing against the government. I mean, this is crucial. Is the federal leader, who used to be a member of your caucus yes. at Queen's Park, Jagmeet Singh, is he a help or a hindrance to your efforts? Oh, I mean, Jagmeet is, a, is, a, is wonderful. I met with Jagmeet just this weekend in Brampton. Uh, I think he has connected with a lot of also new communities across this province. But the, the opportunity we have here right now is the provincial NDP fighting the conservatives and building something that we can get excited about. And I mean, the, I, I'm always a fan of, we also have some really strong uh, NDP MPs here, and I hope we can make more inroads in the next federal election. Your party is 60 years old, and I wonder, this is one of these sort of airy-fairy academic questions, but I wonder 
whether you think its most important moments over the course of those years mm -hmm. were the five years it spent in power or the 55 years it spent in opposition, <laughs> trying in many cases to have a positive influence on power. It's hard to be in opposition. Um, we're good at it. We know how to do this. But I will say, uh, you know, I worked my first job out of university uh, in in Ontario was was working in the NDP government. I worked uh, for an MPP named Gilles Vincent. Timmins. From Timmins, and uh, and so I worked on a lot of northern issues. And I remember those days. I mean, I was a very junior assistant, but I'm really proud of what we achieved in government. And and a lot of what we achieved has stuck, which is really interesting, right? Midwifery, nurse practitioners, Cancer Care Ontario, the Environmental Bill of Rights. Uh, we built a lot of housing. Um, I, I'm really proud of all of that. Jobs Ontario, training programs. But, you know, and it's taken, in, in the 30 years since then, every government has tried to strip away what we achieved, little bit by bit, but there's some things that have stuck. And I have ever since then thought, you know, this is what we need to do. We can, we can, we can prevent a lot of damage and we can hopefully put forward solutions and work with other levels of, or other parties uh, when we're in opposition. But if we're really going to make the change that needs to happen in this province, if we're going to stop the crisis in healthcare, we have to have an opportunity to be in government so we can do it. There are solutions and people need to know that and we need to inspire them to believe that we can make it happen. Well, hopefully this will be the first of many visits to our studio yes. over the ensuing years that you have this job. That's Marit Stiles. She's the incoming leader of the Ontario NDP. Thanks for joining Thank us you. here on TV. Thanks so much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.